What happens if in Fallout 4, rather than trying to ally with and help all of the major factions, you just try and kill them? This is a question that pops into my head after doing a recent playthrough. In this playthrough, rather than trying to take the peaceful way out, a lot of times I would just do the quest and try and kill as many people as possible during those quests. I wouldn't look for charisma or dialogue options, I'd just settle it with guns. Then that got me thinking, what if I took this even a step further? What if in my next playthrough of Fallout 4, I never tried to talk to anyone? The second I encountered the Minutemen, the Railroad, the Institute, and the Brotherhood, I just started shooting. Well, that pretty much leads us to this video, where I'm gonna find out what happens when you just attack all of the major factions, rather than trying to talk to them, do any of their quests, before we get started though, we're gonna need a few supplies, a few mods to help us along the way and just make things a little bit easier. Whenever people say those kinds of things, I always picture YouTubers throwing things aggressively into a bag, so let's do that. Start me up. Survival options, some cool weapon mod, and you're pretty much good to go. To give a little bit more context as to why I picked these mods in particular, Start Me Up allows you to pretty much customize your character as much as you want and change the starting part of the game so you can spawn at level 10 and have some decent perks and not have to deal with modifying that through the console. Survival options allows you to actually change some of the damage modifiers and a lot of other options about the game so I can take next to no damage and deal a ton of damage making this video infinitely easier. But shh, that'll be our little secret. Secret. And you know, cool weapon mod, because the vanilla stuff in Fallout 4 kind of sucks. And with all of that out of the way, I make my way to the Museum of Freedom to encounter Fallout 4's worst and by far most boring faction, the Minutemen. Speaking of which, if you're looking for some mods to improve them, I made a video on that last week. I may have gotten a little trigger happy and try and take some shots at Preston right outside the building. Unfortunately, it seems like that didn't do anything just yet. And as you make your way in, after clearing through the raiders, I finally got to that moment. Encountering Preston and his goons, and I finally could let out all this anger that I've had built up for the past three years. No, Preston, I don't want to do another settlement. Thank you, though. The fight with Preston and friends was difficult. They definitely are a pretty formidable force, and honestly, they just kept getting back up. After taking down one or two of these characters, you'd move on to the next few, and then the first two would start getting back up again. It was truly a difficult battle, but eventually I did prevail. I did get all of the characters down, then they got back up again. You see, unfortunately, at this stage in the game, Preston and friends are essential. More or less what that means is the game looks at them as essential characters to the story and they cannot be taken down. So even though I couldn't progress in the Minutemen quest because you can't actually talk to Preston because he is aggro to you, you also couldn't kill them. So you're kind of stuck in this perpetual loop of shooting them until they fell down and then they'd get back up and shoot you back. Frustrated, but not defeated, I moved on to the next major faction you'll encounter in Fallout 4, that would be Brotherhood of Steel. I have a particular fondness for these guys, so it felt a little bad actually taking them down, but they just weren't getting the message. After reaching the Cambridge police station, I dumped quite a few magazines into Paladin Dance to no avail. He just stood there, took them, and still had that happy grin on his face. As some of his underlings got up and began to join the fight, he got the message. Them having much less armor took more damage from my attacks, and then they all became aggro to me. And just like that, something beautiful happened. With one amazingly well-placed shot on Scribe Halen's head, it it happened. You are now enemies with the Brotherhood of Steel. I made quick work of the remaining two. Paladin danced without his underlings wasn't much of a threat, and honestly the ghouls gave me far more trouble. And that was it. Now I could loot their bodies, get all of their equipment, and I even got a key to the Cambridge Police Station, my new personal home. Although unfortunately, at this point in the game, I couldn't actually get any of the valuable stuff off of Paladin Dance. You couldn't even take his power armor if you tried. But that was it. The fire support quest was failed, and considering that's a prerequisite for the entire Brotherhood questline, I could never do it. The Brotherhood was perpetually my enemy. Although you still could do some of the other quests for the Railroad and the Minutemen and actually get the Pridwin into the Commonwealth, you could never board it safely. They would always just attack you on site. Feeling accomplished, I moved on to the third major faction, that with the Railroad. Only a short walk away, I made my way into the North Church and eventually cracked the code to the Railroad's HQ. The Railroad was by far the most difficult fight yet. They had more men, more firepower, and by far the best armor outside of Paladin Dance. Outnumbered and injured, I had to retreat to cover. But after landing a fatal blow on the minigun carrier, I had gotten a minigun. From there, I made quick work of the remaining, and what I found was a similar story to the Brotherhood of Steel. I was now perpetually aggroed to the railroad. There was no quest for me to do, I couldn't even do the first quest on them. Desdemonda and Deacon were dead, which pretty much locks you in place based on where you are currently. 
Although I did get access to the Railroad HQ from Desdemonda's body, and I could clear things out there. Tinker Tom and a few various Railroad agents were all that remained, but here I found something quite interesting. Despite me clearing out every Railroad agent thus far into the game, Pam wasn't aggro to me. She was clearly in her attack stance, but she wouldn't hurt me, and for that reason, I didn't hurt her. Almost like both me and her knew that what I actually did was correct, considering many theories place Pam as the starter of the Great War. Scavenging the Railroad HQ led to a lot of great loot. They had some of the rarest and most sought after items in the game, and they were now placed in my inventory. But outside of that, the place was largely in shambles. There wasn't much to look at, so I figured I had to move on. But that's when the severity and impact of my actions actually hit me. As a result of taking down the railroad, I never could get the Institute. The Institute are hidden within the Commonwealth. The only way you actually get access to them is by going down the railroad quest line. Considering now I never even get access to the railroad quest because I never finished the Brotherhood quest and I killed the only people that I would be able to turn the quest into, the Institute would never appear. I would never get to contact them. As a result of my actions, the Institute decides to remain in hiding and not actually interact with those normies of the Commonwealth. Feeling significantly more powerful and satisfied, I decided to give the Minutemen another go. Rather than just attacking them up front this time though, I thought, what if I actually side with them? I play Garvey's little game and save him and his friends, then turn on them as they arrive at their home in Sanctuary. The irony that would be. Enough time having passed, Garvey was now passive to me, but as I approached him, he gave me a different response. It seems like since I attacked him the first time around, he was a little bit more wary. He knew the power I held and he was hoping I wouldn't do the same thing again. And even in addition, since I picked off that minigun off of the railroad agent, Sturges actually also had a new dialogue option, where I could respond now with, I actually have a minigun already, rather than having to pick one up. But then something terrible happened. It seems like since I picked up the power armor the first time around, I now glitched this quest. Even though I wanted to help the Minutemen and help them free themselves from here, I never could pick up the minigun. Even after getting my armor and ripping the minigun, off of that vertebrate, the game still told me I had to do it. Trying to use console commands to force the quest forward allowed me to complete it, but Garvey never understood this. He still acted like I wasn't helping them, or that I hadn't killed all the raiders outside, even though I did. And just like that, it was the end. There was nothing I could really do. I continued to shoot Garvey and try and take down him and his squad, but I wouldn't get anywhere. they just get back up. And I couldn't progress the quest because there was no minigun for me to pick up. The interesting part about this though is, let's say I didn't pick up that minigun and I didn't use that power armor, whatever glitched the quest originally. That would leave the game in a state where all you could do is settlement quests. You couldn't progress with the Minutemen, you couldn't progress with the Railroad, and the Institute would never be entered into the equation. So by killing all the other faction leaders, all that would be left is Preston Garvey, who would remain essential. So your Fallout 4 would turn into a state where all you could do is save another settlement. And just like that, you would enter into a game state where an unrelenting force would pretty much hit an immovable object. Preston would just continue to give you settlements to save over and over again, and even if you killed everyone over and over again. After enough time passing, he would be happy with you again and give you the same quest. So that was it, that was my experience in Fallout 4, trying to kill all of the faction leaders. The result was actually pretty interesting. I didn't know you could kill Dance and friends right away, nor the railroad. Especially considering by taking down the railroad right away, you prevent the Institute from entering in or actually teleporting you into their base. You're kind of just stuck with Garvey and stuck with saving settlements if you want to go this route in the game, and I imagine for that reason, a lot of you won't. I actually had a lot of fun filming this video. I feel like it was interesting to enter into such an odd game state. So much so that I'd actually love to do it again. Let me know in the comments down below, would you want to see something like this again where I take on a weird approach to Fallout 4, totally out of the ordinary? And even further, give me some ideas because I'm not that creative. If you guys did enjoy the video, you can leave a like or subscribe, but actually just a little bit of a shout out. I will be live streaming in two days time. So on Saturday, basically Fallout 76 is going to get a new info dump at QuakeCon. It's taking place again on this Saturday at 11 a.m. Central Time, which actually works out to noon Eastern Time or conversely 9 a.m. Pacific Time. I'll probably start live streaming about a half hour before it begins, but more or less at this, they're going to give us an in-depth look at character systems and perks. And Todd Howard's actually going to be one of the people presenting this, so we should hopefully get a pretty nice look at this. And in addition, they're actually going to be answering a bunch of fan-submitted questions. They were taking submissions on 
Twitter. I think they're looking at Reddit and some other forums also. I submitted a few questions on Twitter that I would love to get answers to. So we'll see in time what actually gets answered, but hopefully there's a good amount of time dedicated to this and there's actually somewhat of a dialogue. Either way, I'm excited. I'm going to be live streaming that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. As always, again, I thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all next time. Later.